kind of emotional moment, guys. You guys really don't quite don't realize this, but it's emotional for a couple of different reasons. I'm not the adults if they feel it, what I feel. Um, but the goal really is, I mean, really is, the goal is for you to grow in Christ. The goal is for you to just grow in Christ. And so what I mean by that is that we, us adults that are in here, that, um, that, that are here to help equip you and to encourage you and motivate you and then sharpen you. And we're here, all the adults, myself, Mr. Andrew, Molly, um, every, all your life reviews, we're here. And we will do anything but sin to get you closer to the Lord. Okay, if we knew, literally, I'm stuck serious. If we knew that if we could stand on our head and that grew you closer to the Lord, or drew you closer to the Lord, and got you where you wouldn't want to chase Jesus, using your gifts and your talents, and everything you got with all your heart chase Jesus, every one of us would try our best to, to get on our head and stand on our head. We would try everything that we possibly could. So for us to see Alexis leading us in worship tonight on the first night really speaks to our heart. Because that's the goal. And so it's been really awesome to see you grow. And you can be the little tag along and, and to all the camps and all that. So I just want to affirm you in front of all your peers. I want you to know that we are so proud of you and we're so grateful for you. And um, and so tonight was a really amazing night. We can I can end the night. I go home and I will sleep very good um, tonight. So I want you to know that in my heart. And so I won't speak too much about it. I'll, I'll start crying. Oh, we we start getting, getting emotional. Tell me why. Okay. That's what we do. And so I'll let y'all know that. All right. So tonight we're again marking on a new series. Okay. A brand new series. And this series is called Remarkable. I check out the screen. It is called Remarkable. For the next three weeks, we'll be unpacking verses um, 1 through 10 of Ephesians chapter 2. Okay. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and find Ephesians. If you don't know where Ephesians is, is at. Okay, you don't know where that's at, but I'm like, hey, Shane, I have no idea where that's at in the Bible. See what you do. Open the Bible real quick, and you will see a table of contents, and then you can find where Ephesians. Just so you know, for forever and ever and ever, that's how I learn where stuff are in the Bible. Really quick. Somebody's like, man, you know where the Bible, you know where that page is at in the Bible. You know how I tell? Because I go to the table of contents, and it says, this page on page 210, and then I'm like, bam, 210, there it is. So we're in this series called Remarkable. And so I want to set this up while you're finding Ephesians chapter 2. Okay, if you don't have a Bible, maybe you believe you can find a Bible. We just need to make sure we take it back, uh, put that word where we got it from for kids' ministry. But there's some Bibles in the back. If you would like a Bible, just raise your hand real quick and Mr. Andrew, Pastor Andrew will come out and bring some Bibles to you. Okay, so while you're finding that, I'm going to go to the definition. So everybody else, pay attention. Okay, just put your hand up and you can pay attention when you are a hard copy of the Bible. And so, Matt, can we get the definition of remarkable? This is Shane's definition of remarkable. Check out. Remarkable is something or someone that is unusual, that is exceptional, that is interesting, or excellent. In other words, it is something or someone that is like, bam! Wow. I'm from, I'm from old school, so we would say to that. That's what we would say. Okay. We would say ta-da, that means ta-da and wow at the same time. That's what we would say. We would say ta-da. That's what we say. Remarkable is something that you go, oh my goodness. Have you ever had a remarkable moment? Have you ever met somebody remarkable? Somebody like being famous? Have you ever experienced something like crazy? I know you have, of being in Africa. Right? The first time you saw the hippopotamus, you were talking about this. You'd be like, oh my goodness, and they go back to the egg, right? And he, he, he's cracked out, they go back to the egg, we'll open his tail, pink is all get out, like, man, oh my goodness. It's one of those. And so we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at this passage, and I'm telling you, it's crazy. It's like, oh my goodness. And so tonight's going to lead us into a little bit of a, a weird moment because you're going to hear a lot of bad news. You really are. Tonight you're your bad news. I'm telling you, Brandon, you're gonna hear bad news tonight. You're gonna be like, oh my goodness, I can't believe Shane, you know, Pastor Shane, whatever you call me, Coach Shane, you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, man, this is kind of I'm kind of man, I'm kind of sad. So I'm hoping to lead you and I'm hoping you'll learn something. Okay? 
So before I do, I just want to let you know, um, I love pets. Okay? I love animals. Any animal fans in here? Yes, I love animals. But when I was a kid, do not want a poor pet. Check it out. I wanted a tiger or a lion. Check it out. I really wanted a baby one because it looked real cute and then it gets big. The way I grew up, I grew up in a uh, not great neighborhood, what you call like the ghetto or the slums. Um, the place I grew up was very rough, rough, very rough environment. Okay? We didn't have much of anything. And so I always thought it was super cool to walk around with my pet lion and be like, what's up, fools? And then somebody mess with me and be like, get him, you know, tear him up, you know. And then everybody, number one, everybody's going to think I was the coolest person in the world because I got a pet tiger, a lion or tiger. So I did. I wanted a tiger because it was this character, a cartoon called E-Man. They had Battle Cat, and I was like, oh my goodness, I want a Battle Cat. And, um, and so, but check it out. I was like, knew that was never going to happen, but I thought, this is what I thought, though. And I think Rescue is down under. There was a cartoon called Rescue down under. Yes. I, it really messed me up. Yeah. So I thought, I could never get a tiger or a lion, but so, but what could I possibly get? It was like, you know what? Maybe I will stumble upon an eagle egg. And then I will raise that baby eagle. And I will tame that eagle. And I will say, yeah! And then that eagle will swoop in. They grab something for me. Somebody met you mess with me. This is check it out, take it, take it. If you mess with me, I'm gonna sit sit my ego. And it will come with it and take its talents and will like wrap your face off your body. And that's what I really thought. Hey, how, how cool would it be? You guys would love me. I came back to mine and I was like, what's up? You would everybody would love me. I would be the coolest, I promise you this. When I go to Grove Town High School, I was in high school and I do my Bible studies, I do on Wednesday and Thursday, and I come in there with my pet eagle. I promise you, everybody would love me. You're like, they want to, they want they put their hands over their heart because we live in America, and, and they start seeing it. They start saying, oh, man. They would immediately, they would be like, oh my goodness. But I thought, man, I don't need an eagle. But check it out. I never got an eagle. But one day, when I was in, I was around eight years old. I'm walking around my grandma's house. I live with my grandma, and, um, and her name was Gladys, Hazel Gladys. So that's a real cool southern name. And so we walking around, and I'm about to chimney, and I saw a bird. I kid you not. I reached down, and it wasn't an eagle. It was a woodpecker. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to tame this woodpecker. So my mess with me is going to be like, it's going to take your eyes out. I don't think I'm playing. If I'm lying, I'm done. I thought I'm, so we get this old barn, we went into the barn, I got one of those uh, uh, uh the little uh you know little cage, it's like a it was like gold, but it really looked gold, it went like grass and rust all over it. And it probably got tetanus from it, but it's like this, this big. And uh and so I went home and man, every like three times a day I would put I would be I'd grab his little throat, open his mouth, because he got weird little beats, and uh and I would put a grasshopper in his mouth, and I would rub up his neck, and he would swallow a grasshopper. And, I would... and so what I did was, that's why I got beat him. I thought I would be his mama, his wife's dad, and, and that he, he would be a broken mother. He or she, I didn't, I, I didn't know what it was. It's <laughs> so like they all had feathers, which is kind of the tree. But anyway, so I got off the school bus one day, and you know what happened? I got off the school bus, you can imagine. I got off the school bus, I hop off, and I'm like, I can't wait to go see Woody. I need my Woody too. It's a pretty regular name for Woodpecker. And I come in and I'm like, oh, I need my Woodpecker. And guess what? That dog was on the ground. He had ants all over him. He was dead. He had ants in his eyeballs. He was ants covered. And I was like, oh my goodness. You laughing too much, man. I was hurt. I was crying. I was crying. This is my woodpecker, and he's cr I'm crying as ants all over his body, feathers, like, oh my goodness, he just died. And I grabbed him, and the only thing I knew what to do was grab a water hose, and it had a sporty end of it, not a sport. Feathers, he's like, he's that butt naked at this point. He's like a butt naked woodpecker. He's got ants all over him, and he is dead, dead, dead. I went down the hole. I put my Woody the Woodpecker in there, and I buried him in a little eulogy form. I was sad, and I was like, oh my goodness. Here's the thing about Woody. 
Check it out. Is that he was dead. And, and, and here's, here's something you need to know. You may know this. You may not. But check this out. Dead things don't do things. Dead things don't do things. Listen, to me, say it guys. So dead things don't do things. No matter how much I wanted him to, to, to come back alive and all that, and I, and I laughed. I laughed about it now. When I was younger, like, there was no laughing matter. Like, I, my heart was destroyed. It was broken. I love animals so much. But one thing you got to know is that dead things don't do things. No matter what I did to help him, he wasn't one move. And so you're going to see in this passage, if you'll check it out, verse 1. Let's look at this. We're going to look at three verses. And so it says this, it says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is not at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. So if you go in and look at the very beginning, just keep looking at the Bible. Don't look at me, but just look at the Bible or look at the screens. It says you were dead. So one thing we need to realize is that dead things don't do things. Okay? Dead things don't do things. And here we this is what this is what this guy named Paul of the Bible. This is what he's this is what he's talking about, though. He was talking about that, that you're dead because of sin. That's what he's talking about. You're dead in your sins, dead in the trespasses and the sin. Okay? And so you are not dead. I want you to, now, now I want you to look at it. As I say this, I want to say this, and I want to make sure I'm saying it correctly to you so you can understand. I want to be perfectly clear with you. I don't want to mislead you. I want to be honest and open. And I need you to pay attention. I want you to zoom in. You're not dead because of your actions. What you do, because you sin. You're not dead because of your actions, because you do wrong things. You are dead. I mean, you do, but because of your nature. Okay, so when, in other words, I just said that kind of wrong. Kind of but you're dead because of your nature, not because of your actions. Okay, because your nature is that's not you, you act. So in other words, it means this. So it means, it's not what I'm talking about. Middle school, switch. Say with me. That means this. You have a natural lean. A natural lean that's lean, that's bending to trespass into sin. That's what it means. Your nature, you have a natural lean. You're all, and you're leaning to one side, okay, to trespass and to sin. I have children. I've been, I've been around this world for, I mean, I've been living for a long time. I've seen a lot of people, and I know myself, that I have a natural lean to sometimes do things that are not great. And, and if we're really honest, which we should be honest with ourselves, we should never lie to ourselves, that we all can agree that. There, there's, there's just a lot of times where we just kind of lean into what's wrong. It's easy to do that. Like, we don't even have to try. You know what I'm talking about? We don't have to try to do some things. So I want, you, I want to break down real quick. Trespass. This is trespass. Trespass means this. This is what it means. Okay, well, I'm going to break it down. In, in, in the actual language, which, which you guys don't really need to know, it means this. It means to drift. It means to wander. It means to drift. It means to go down the wrong road. It means, you, it means to go down the wrong road. It's like this. It's what it means. It's like us living in Grotown right now, and it's saying, hey, I would like to go to Florida. And we hop on I-20, and we go straight, straight like west. Just, we just go straight, straight west. Right? Are we going to go to Florida? No. What if we got on Highway 1? We took a different little road. We, go down. we got only no maps. I don't even know what I'm talking about. This is going to be honest. But it's like this here, let's bring it out. If you want to go to Walmart, which road would you go to? Which road would you go to? If you want to go to Walmart, right. you got some yeah. trail to get on. Left. Yeah, yeah, you come out of the parking lot and you go left. Right? But what if you say, I'm going to go to Walmart, I can't wait to go to Walmart, and you choose to get on this road and drive across my John Deere and go all that way and keep going. To get to that red light, you make another one. You think you'll get to Walmart? No, you will not get to Walmart. It's impossible. You can't get to a wall. I'm going to go to Walmart Road Town. You won't go to Walmart Road Town. You won't go somewhere else. So that's what it's saying. Stay with me. Stay with me. So you have a natural lean, a natural bend to go to, to, to choose to do the wrong road. Like, like you know, like, I'm just going to go this way and just drift. That's what it's talking about. 
And so we choose to do things like that are not right. So check it out, it's sin. The word sin, if you look at the word sin, this is what sin means. Sin means what's used here. It's mean to miss the mark. To miss the mark. Now, any, any reason that you like to shoot stuff, like, I'm not saying animals, like, love animals, but like, you like to shoot girls? Who does any girls do bow and arrow or anything? Okay, a lot of you girls are going to be like, you guys love bow and All right, here we go. So can you imagine, like, sin and like, like, they're missing the mark. You don't get the bulls out. That's what it's talking about. But it's talking about that in the context of God. And so it's like we have this natural leaning, this natural bend to miss the mark, okay, to miss the mark to, to drift to go down the wrong road. That's what it's talking about. If you keep looking, let, let's, let's, let's look some more. It says, in which, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, okay, following the course of this world, following the prince of power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. That's a whole lot of stuff. A lot of that stuff right there is stuff that the people would be believe. They actually believe that that uh, uh, you know there's uh, uh, I would say a lot of the evil things that were in the air. And so he's basically saying like you're choosing, you're doing all these things. You're not following God. You're following things that are not of God. That's what you really need to know. Following things that are not of God. Okay, either you're following God or you're following something else. Okay, so there's a lot of things. Okay, a lot of that we're unpacking, we're not going to unpack that tonight. Look at verse 3. It says, Among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature to and Alright, so let's look at verse 3. It says, Among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh. This is what this means. This when I think about this. I think, this is when I think of that, I'm going to make it very simple for you. It's basically saying, is that, uh, that that we choose to do the opposite in this lean to do the opposite of what the fruits of the spirit does. That's basically what it means. By pulling all that. So you guys know what the fruits of the spirit are? Are the fruit of the spirit? Yeah. Alright? Anybody know? Alright, Alexis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 100 percent right on. Yeah, it's Galatians 5. We've taken out notes. Have you ever it's Galatians chapter 5? Verse 22, okay? It says, but the fruits of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, I always quote that thing. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such things there is no more. Okay? So think about, I'm just going to say right now, let's think about this. You guys are middle school. And how many times we deal with our mom and our dad, our parents, okay, when we're our siblings, we do it at our school, we're dealing with our family, a whole heap of a lot. And are you patient with them a lot of the time? We're honest sometimes. Not all the time, right? Is there who's patient with their parents all the time? And their siblings. Who's patient with their siblings all the time? Who does good stuff all the time? You see what I'm saying? Hey, stop, stop, stop. This is, this is not this is not really funny. It's not really funny. Because okay, in the fruits of the Spirit, what God, the Spirit of God does in us, it's not of us, like, we can try to muster up a lot of strength and do make good decisions, but that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that's in us, man, does something. And, 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 and you, you, it changes you from the inside out. It changes you from the inside out. I tell you, my dad, my, I always think about my dad. My dad was, what, was the worst person I've ever known in my life. Okay, my dad was abusive, beat us, half of them, you know, brother special needs because of my dad. Like, I think about all this stuff about my dad. I was like so, like, such a mean man. And when I was 12, he heard about Jesus. And Jesus changed my dad's life. Literally, like, he was the most evil man I've ever done in my life. To where my dad, he, like, loved us. Taught me a basketball for the very first time, spent time with us, didn't beat us, was very gentle. I mean, he couldn't even muster enough strength to do those things. He couldn't keep his hands off of us. And my dad was like, different. Only one thing can change my dad's life. Jesus was a man, was a person. It was a God. The gospel changed my dad's life. 
the Holy Spirit came to my dad and he started working on my dad. Now the truth of the matter is my dad still got, he wasn't perfect, my dad still had got depressed. Because he got depressed into his life. Not a little thing. But I think what matters to my dad, Michael, if I ever doubt, like sometimes, even being so, I'm a pastor, but I'm human, and sometimes I have my doubts, and I always think about the goodness of God and my dad, and like, man, that's how I know that the gospel is real. That's how I know that God knows the throne. That's how I know that the Holy Spirit changes things from the inside out, and slowly changes you from the inside out, to where you don't do those things like you used to do. Only God can do that. You can't muster enough strength. That's what makes marriage so awesome, is that you think God can take two totally different people together. You know? Because um, they can't muster up enough feelings to make it right all the time. They need to do the work. And so this is talking about man. Like, he's, he's basically saying, among whom we all once lived, he's basically saying we all were once. We were dead in our trespasses. We are in our sin. We've done all these terrible things. That's what Paul is saying. He's like, man, it's Paul. You remember Paul? You remember anybody have an idea what Paul used to do? What let Alexis do? Yeah, he used to kill Christians. He was a murderer. Paul used to kill Christians. And he thought he was doing the right thing. He was harming people. Harming people is not a good thing. So he was harming people. And, 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 and then it says here, it says, we, he was he basically saying, you were dead in the trespasses and sins. He was talking to, talk to the church in which you once walked. He says, man, you were dead. Spiritually, like your soul, like you were rotting. You were like a decay. This is going to be kind of like crazy for middle school, but like you're like a, a road king inside the road that's just decaying. You ever smell something like that? Ooh, it smells terrible. But check this out. Listen to me. In sin, that's exactly how you are. In sin, that's exactly how you are. I'm serious. That's what it says. You chose to do wrong, you had to swing to do wrong things and say that you were dying in your sin. Dead things don't do things. You're really worth nothing. Apart from Jesus, you're nothing. And that's what he said. And he goes on and he says, and then you're choosing to just chase after it, rather about all these things that you want to do. It'd be like, hey, I want to be ugly, be mean, and be rude to people or gossip. It's like, I just want to go do these things. That's what he said. We have this bend to want to do these things. And then he keeps going and he says, we're once, he says, if you look at verse 3, towards the end, it says, we're by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. And so in the Bible, the evil of history, let's not have a few minutes left, but, but Bible, in the Bible days, like people, listen, in the Bible days, people chose to do wrong. Like so much they created idols in Romans chapter 1. If you have a friend on the right now, Romans chapter 1, verse 20. And just put dot 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 just read the entire rest of chapter uh, uh, chapter one. And it says that people even invented ways to do bad things. And so they didn't choose to worship God. People chose to like make uh, 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 you know make make some wood and make make God out of a piece of wood with a little G God. They worshipped a goat cat, took some earrings off his ears and what kept bling bling, and then made this little cow. Chick-fil-A cow. We worship the Chick-fil-A cow. We think that's crazy. We do. Think about it. Would you worship a Chick-fil-A cow? No. But check this out. Some of y'all worship video games. And you don't even know it. Because it occupies all your time. And you're in middle school, so I'm not going to cut you in slack. Some of you worship video games. Some of you worship gossip. Some of you worship just want to do wrong. Some of you love studies more than anything. You love your books. You love to read. You love your books. My daughter loves to read like crazy. She read a book in a day. Sometimes that's all she wants to do. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm not saying that it can become your worship. Your worship. So in the Bible days, people would worship other things. And that's what I'm saying. God, if God's a jealous God, and here's one thing that you need to know about God. God doesn't like sin. He doesn't like sin. He actually he can't stand sin. He won't even entertain. Want to be around him? Doesn't like that at all. Not one bit. One bit. So if I were you sitting in these chairs, this is what I'd be thinking. 
I'd be like, man, Pastor Shane, this is like weird. You're not even saying anything funny when you joke to me. This is all like just talk. Because then I was just you to middle school, that's what I would think. I'd be like, man, Pastor Shane, so why are you even talking about this tonight? Because this is what I need you to know. Is that there is there is the bad news of the gospel, and that's what we have to talk about before we talk about the good news. The good news is going to come next week. But what I want you to know is I want you to I want us to see reality. I want you to see reality. Now reality changes us. It, it draws us in, and we're able to look at something. If something's reality, like we can feel and touch it. So I want to speak from reality. That we're dead in our sins apart from Christ. Okay? We need reality. So keep me attentive. When it comes to COVID, when it comes to like the COVID, you know, the, 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 the things we reason we all these masks with COVID. For my family, I have three kids, three children. Okay? I say kid because I do like him. So, so like, and so we have three children. Daisy, Andrew, and Tony. Now, my boys, my two youngest boys, are super cute, okay? Super cute. And so, um, and so, um, if they, you know, we'll let you some of y'all, some of y'all awesome ladies wear them today. They're super cute. And so, the one thing about my boys is that we pray, and my daughters, we pray as a family every single night, okay? I can't remember a time that we, since I'm, when I'm, when I'm home, we never miss a night. And I'm sure my wife, she's a better husband job than I do. But we pray, we pray for COVID. We pray for doctors, nurses, everything. We do every single night. I don't know if you think about that, but that's how we live our family. But for my kids, they don't understand what COVID, what the corona is. They don't understand this is bad virus. They just know we got the mask and we go to Okay? Until someone that they love a lot got COVID. And that was. Now, Miss Pam has had my boys all years. And Miss Pam writes letters and sends cards and shows up at my house and brings my kids stuff. My kids love Miss Pam boys. Loves her like crazy. We send videos to her, but when she got COVID, when she got, got COVID, my boys pleaded and prayed to God. Like it, like it was their job. Why? Because they finally, they just took all their meds. It became reality that this is a serious like, thing that can really hurt people and it hurts somebody that they love. It became reality. That's like when, when that young person, when you get one day, you'll get a car, maybe, unless you have Mama Uber and Daddy Uber. Some of y'all like Mama Uber and Daddy Uber. But you may get a car. And your parents will say this. I'm telling you, remember this parents that you made? Remember this for the next few years. Your parents will say, listen, don't get no wreck, don't speed, don't encourage it. And you'll be a safe driver. Think about these things. And if you are a level head and you get in a car accident or a speeding ticket, especially a speeding ticket, I mean, car accident, that's serious business. But if you get a speeding ticket and you have to come to your dad and you're like, man, sorry, Pops. I was driving a 65 and a 55 and you got like a $300 bill that you have to pay. Your heart, when it costs for you, your heart's beating so hard, so fast. It becomes reality. You understand what I'm saying when I say that? Right? Does that understand? Your friends get sick. It doesn't really bother you. When you get sick, you understand that, man, this is pretty serious. Right? So you understand what I'm saying? So I'm, what I'm saying is I'm trying to make this to be reality. I want you to understand that, that this. And so outside of Jesus, outside of Jesus, we are dead in sin. Let me say that again one more time. I need you to pay attention. When you come in outside of Jesus, we, everyone on this planet, Earth, every high school that's over there, all of us outside of Jesus, we are dead in sin. We are dead in sin. And so here's, here's what I would, I would even say this. If you, if you are feeling the weight of what I'm saying to you, like you're starting to really think about this whole trespass and sin thing, and you start to feel like, man, Pastor Shane, you talk about dead, and you're dead spiritually, outside of Jesus, if you're thinking about these things, I'm going to tell you, that is the truth. There's nothing wrong. That's why I want you to think about it. Because it needs to become reality to you. You're at a good place. And this is why you're at a good place. Because you need to understand the value of the energy and the good news. So let, let, so let, me, let me give you an encouragement. 
I'm going to wrap up. Here's the encouragement. Here's our thought. Say that. Despite, you just say like that. Despite our disobedience, despite that we just want to disobey God, despite our disobedience, despite our heart, because the Bible says like our heart is going to do wrong things. We have this natural need to do wrong things. Despite our heart, despite us wanting to do wrong, despite our disobedience, God is and He was drawn close to us. He was and He is and He's drawn close to us. We need to know that. Okay, that's, the, that's one of the, the most amazing things about the gospel, about Jesus, is that when we do wrong, He doesn't walk away from us. And I can tell you so many people in my life when I've done wrong, they walk away from me. They have. They see the ugly side of shame in my past and they walk away. I even went to bed back in the army, bad back in the army, and returned some items when I got married. And a girl looked at me and said, Are you Shane Patrick? I said, Yep. And she just walked away. I had to find somebody else. I must have done something to her. I would not say that shit I'm not nice and neat. Inside, I think about things and I do crummy things all the time. I'm not perfect. When I was in new shoes before, it's hard to believe. All of us adults. But the goodness of God is that when we do crummy things, when we disobey, when despite our heart that wants to do wrong stuff, God doesn't walk away from us. And rather, He walks with us. And I hope that encourages you. Now, as you go to your group, Next week, we're going to look at the rest of Ephesians up to verse 10. And we're going to talk about some good news. So if you're feeling the way of your sin, and you're like thinking about like this whole Jesus thing, the gospel, and how it applies to your life, I would highly encourage you to talk to your small group about it. You guys got it? Are you clear? Good? Okay, we'll pray for you. Lord God.